What's up, everybody? It's Ivan with Trout's Fletching, back with the forecast for a spooky August 13th. Uh, since last we checked in, we've had quite a bit of rain. I think a little bit more than uh, we all expected. I'm certainly no Kathy Sabin, uh, so I wasn't really, I knew that there was going to be rain. I didn't expect it to be like a big flash flood rain. So uh, that was obviously a little bit of a curveball, but uh, as a sort of a general sense, a lot of that rain has helped out uh, quite a few of our uh, favorite freestones, uh, and we're seeing some big flows uh, on the south flood as well. So uh, where we've had not the best water year in terms of uh, snowpack, uh, you know, certainly we've had a better water year here on the front range than on the western slope. Um, you know, we're seeing some pretty solid flows considering, uh, and we've had some openings, the voluntary closures, some of the voluntary closures on the uh, Eagle, um, the Roaring Fork and then the Colorado have been uh, eliminated or uh, rescinded and then uh, there's still some that are, are, are in place. Uh, so, you know, down, gypsum downstream is still in place as a hoot owl closure, uh, you know, Red Dirt Creek down to Rifle still a hoot owl, clo hoot owl closure. Uh, but a lot of that upstream stuff, the whole Roaring Fork is, is open back up. So obviously that's a positive thing. You know, looking at flows, we might get back into a situation where, or fly, might get back into a situation where, you know, we have to be cognizant of, of uh, water temps. So, I, you know, I think it's prudent though, even though the voluntary fishing closures have closed, that you take a thermometer out with you, um, make sure you're temping consistently throughout the day, especially when we get into the afternoon hours, make sure we're not uh, putting undue stress on the fishery. So, uh, with that in mind, we're going to talk about bugs, flows, and weather. Let's start with bugs. Start with bugs. So obviously we have uh, some higher flows on the South Platte. Uh, that's going to mean uh, scuds, um, you know, leeches, crane flies, stone flies. You know, throwing some big patch rubber legs and you know wired stones and stuff like that will be effective. Uh, you know, I've chosen some flies that you know will work in a variety of places, but they're a little bit they're a little bit different. So you, know, you can take your standards, your chubbies, your uh, you know your hippie stompers, you know your Par small parachute atoms and stuff like that. Take those, you always want to have those in the box. These are some uh, interesting additions to have uh, for the upcoming couple weeks. So, oh, I dropped it. We're gonna start with the stubby chubby. Stubby chubby is a great small terrestrial pattern. So uh, there's obviously a lot of hoppers out, but there's also gonna be beetles and uh, flying ants. Um, so you, you know, whether you're fishing the high country or you're fishing uh, you know, the South Platte, the Colorado, a small stubby chubby, uh, you know, you can trail that behind a bigger chubby or a big stimulator, or you can fish it as a single dry. Uh, it's a good attractor fly and you can throw a small dropper off it as well because it is, it is a chubby. It does have that foam and that foam will hold up bugs. So stubby chubby is the first fly I want to talk about. Second fly I'm going to talk about, whoop, 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 nope, didn't grab it. Sweet meat caddis. Uh, so caddis are a are going to be around for the entire summer. Obviously, uh, you're going to run into those. It's a great prospect, prospecting bug. Um, you know, sweet meat caddis has the uh, you know rides hook point up. Has has that jig style. Has some soft tackle. Has some wire. So it's going to get down. It also has some motion. And I like something that looks buggy. I think we've talked about this many a time. But the sweet meat caddis sort of fits that that bill for me. So uh, that's why I included it. Along on that caddis train, obviously there's uh, gonna be trichos around, so you, you wanna make sure you have your favorite trico patterns, but a good prospecting pattern is this uh, mini hot from Greg Garcia. Uh, it's a good, really good, solid caddis pattern. Uh, sort of takes some elements from the stimulator, uh, from the elk hair caddis, has the sort of egg laying feature on the back, uh, so it's a super versatile fly. Um, you can use it as a prospector, you can use it to risers, you can skate it. I uh, really like that fly quite a bit. What's a uh, fly recommendation on, here on the front range without a Charlie Craven appearance? <clears throat> the Juju Betis Tungsten, this is in pink. So if you're throwing, you know, this time of year, especially as the uh, Colorado opens back up and you might be able to fish those dry droppers from a boat, um, you know, you, you're fishing, you can fish the normal 18 to 24, but you can also extend that down quite a bit. Put a, like a really long dropper on and that fly will get down into the pocket. Uh, it's slim, has the tungsten, will drop really quickly. Uh, so it's a great dry dropper pattern. Uh, you can also fish it on a traditional nymph rig, but I love it on a dry dropper pattern, uh, dry dropper rig. Um, 
it is pink, uh, so it's a little bit different than you know what the fish are going to normally see. Um, you know, it gives them that chance to say maybe, which you know I've talked about in the past that that, that old Russ Miller saying, you know, all you want the fish is, to do is, is think, oh maybe that's food, and uh, the pink while isn't something natural you'll see. Well, you might, you can see it in some of the PMDs uh, on the Western Slope, but it's not something you're going to see a ton. The pink is just, it just sort of sticks out and is a, a great option this time of year. Um, and sort of going, going back to uh, streamers, the skittish smolt. Skittish smolt has flash. And I think that's peacock, I'm not sure. I'm not a fly t uh, prolific fly tire, but I can tell you that the skittish smolt catches fish. I uh, was introduced to this pattern when I uh, lived up in Montana on the Missouri. Uh, they love fishing that pattern up there, uh, and I've brought, I've fished it down here as well. It's very similar to the Creelex. It's flashy uh, this time of year. Uh, you know, browns are going to start to get a little bit pre-spawn, a little bit nippy. Uh, it's been a weirder year, so you, you know, you but you are getting some cooler nights, uh, and so streamer fish can be super productive, banging the banks, uh, working, you know, foam lines, you know, swinging it out. A variety of presentations will work. The skittish smolt is a great option. So there's bugs. Let's get to flows. Flows. So obviously we had a huge bump last last week or week prior uh, with that, those big rain events coming through. Um, you know, we're seeing a drop, especially you know, on the Eagle is dropping quite, you know, quite a bit, it's below average again. But the Colorado has received upstream bumps from the Blue River and the Williams Fork, which means that uh, you know, that middle Colorado section is uh, open and water temps are sitting in, in the low, low, to, low to lower, slightly lower, 60s, so like 60 to 62. Uh, it's a really good, good range. Obviously, uh, you want to be wary of it. You know, be mindful. Make sure you bring your thermometer. But uh, we're seeing increases in flows uh, there. We we saw a bump on the you know the Roaring Fork as well, uh, and then on the Tailwaters, you know they've bumped it quite a bit below Cheeseman. Uh, we're seeing you know uh, elevated flows on the uh, Dreamstream and 11 Mile, uh, which is obviously good news for a. Uh, lower water area like this. So uh, we're blasting into August with some positive, some good flows. Uh, that's that's certainly a welcome sight uh, for us after a little bit of a sparser uh, beginning to, or middle of the summer. Um, so I think I said last time, shout out to dams. I didn't think I'd say this, but shout out to dams. Uh, we're, we're in a good position here in late, uh, early August into mid August. And uh, you know, hopefully that will, that will hold into the fall and we'll, We'll have some uh, healthy fisheries going into fall. So, um, you know, obviously there's some some fisheries that aren't doing as well. You know, namely the Lower Colorado. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how that sort of plays out. Uh, but uh, we'll we'll keep you keep you in the loop is what we what we hear and uh, what we're seeing on the water. So, yeah, there we go. That's flows. Let's get to weather. Right, we're gonna wrap it up with weather. Uh, we have. Some reasonably warm August weather you sort of ex come to expect at this time of year, but we have some nice uh, afternoon thunderstorms coming in a couple of those afternoons. So obviously we want to keep on seeing that. <laughs> we want to keep on seeing, seeing those monsoon cycles come through. And uh, yeah, I mean, just sort of trying to make it to fall, you know, not get too hot. Get some uh, good some good rains. Will always be a positive thing. So as always, appreciate you guys tuning in. You can feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, catch us here in the shop, online, troutslifeshine.com. Bye.